Niagara Falls is one of the most famous and spectacular waterfalls in the world, attracting millions of visitors every year. But what if you accidentally or intentionally went over the edge and plunged into the raging waters below? Would you survive? How would you feel? What would happen to your body? Let's find out. First of all, let's clarify which part of Niagara Falls we are talking about. There are actually three separate waterfalls that make up Niagara Falls, the American Falls, the Bridal Veil Falls, and the Horseshoe Falls. The American and Bridal Veil Falls are on the U.S. side of the border, while the Horseshoe Falls are on the Canadian side. The Horseshoe Falls are the largest and most powerful of the three, with a height of 57 meters and a width of 670 meters. The American and Bridal Veil Falls are smaller and less forceful, with a height of 58 meters and a width of 320 meters. The chances of surviving a fall from any of these waterfalls are very slim, but they vary depending on which one you choose. According to statistics, more than 5,000 bodies have been found at the foot of the falls since 1850, and only 16 people have reportedly survived going over the falls. All of these survivors went over the Horseshoe Falls, which means that no one has ever lived after falling from the American or Bridal Veil Falls. Why is that? One reason is that the American and Bridal Veil Falls have a lot of rocks at their base, which means that you would most likely hit them before reaching the water. Even if you managed to avoid them, you would still face a tremendous impact from hitting the water at a high speed. The water pressure at the bottom of the falls is so strong that it could crush your bones and organs. You would also have very little chance of resurfacing, as the water is very turbulent and full of air bubbles that reduce your buoyancy. The Horseshoe Falls, on the other hand, have a deeper pool at their base, which means that you could potentially miss the rocks and enter the water at a more favorable angle. The water pressure is still very high, but not as lethal as at the other falls. You would also have a slightly better chance of resurfacing, as the water is less turbulent and more clear. However, this does not mean that you would be safe. You would still suffer from severe injuries, such as broken bones, internal bleeding, head trauma, hypothermia, and drowning. You would also have to deal with the strong current that could drag you downstream or into a whirlpool. So how did those 16 people survive? Well, most of them were daredevils who went over the falls on purpose, using some kind of protective device such as a barrel, a ball, a kayak, or a jet ski. Some of them wore helmets, life jackets, or harnesses. Some of them were lucky enough to be rescued by boats or helicopters. Some of them suffered only minor injuries, while others had to undergo surgery or amputation. Some of them regretted their decision, while others enjoyed their fame or repeated their stunt. The first person to survive going over Niagara Falls was Annie Edson Taylor, a 63-year-old school teacher who did it in 1901 inside an oak barrel. She hoped to gain money and fame from her feet, but she only received $200 and some souvenirs. She later said that no one ought ever do that again. The most recent person to survive was Kirk Jones, a 40-year-old unemployed man who did it in 2003 without any protective device. He claimed that he was depressed and suicidal at the time, but he later said that he felt very happy after his fall. He tried to do it again in 2017 with an inflatable ball and his pet snake Misty inside it, but he died in his second attempt. So what if we fell into Niagara Falls? The answer is, we would most likely die or get seriously injured. Even if we survived by some miracle, we would face legal consequences for violating the law that prohibits stunting at Niagara Falls. We would also risk harming the environment and wildlife of this natural wonder. Therefore, it is better to admire Niagara Falls from a safe distance and enjoy its beauty without risking our lives. Thank you for watching this episode of What If?